Hi Sagittarius, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for your August 2021 mid-month tarot reading. This is a reading for all Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Thanks to all of you for your support of the channel. It means a lot to me. I love tarot. It's just a lifelong passion for me. It's part of who I am. And so it's great to share your energy and be able to do these readings together. And if you're new here, welcome to you. I post new readings every Friday, then again on Monday. So if a reading doesn't resonate, don't ever try to force it. The, the reading that's meant for you will find you. You can look at other parts of your chart. You could watch readings from Mondays because the style of reading is different every uh, Monday, different format, or like I said, just check back in a couple of days. And if you like tarot and you like this channel, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to Higher Source Tarot. Then you won't miss any announcements. I do get inquiries about personal readings. I don't, I currently just don't have the time to do it, but if that ever changes, I will make an announcement. All right. What advice do you have for Sagittarius? Sun, moon, rising. Oops, something. Yeah, let's take that one out. It just it felt weird that it like turned like that. Okay. Anyway, uh, rising and Venus. All right. What does Sagittarius need to know? Yeah, that was really wild. The card like turned completely in the deck to the opposite direction. Oh, all right. Let's see what that is. Okay. All right. You've got your current situation, strength. The immediate influence is the four of pentacles. Your destiny, you have the hermit. The distant past, you have the um, emperor. The more recent past, the four of swords. The energy coming towards you is the knight of pentacles, but you're represented as the knight of wands. And I want to tell you, in another reading, a different sign, uh, somebody put a, a comment about the Knight of Wands was their Sagittarius. So anyway, it was kind of cute. But um, you're, um, okay, the hopes and fears here is the Five of Cups. Now, we have to be careful interpreting the Death card as something horrible, all right? It is in the outcome, but it's transformational. It really is about leaving the past behind. And so... I do see you as moving forward. We're going to take the bottom two off of the bottom of the deck because we had one card that came out already. So we have here, this is really kind of an interesting mix here because the High Priestess and the Lovers are really layered cards. I mean, they have a lot of hidden meanings, a lot of esoteric meanings, mysticism, and it's really, they're important cards in the Major Arcana, which speaking of, you have here six major arcana. So it is a powerful energy that you're you're entering into here. So the high priestess is the card of the psychic. It is a card of a deep spirituality, of connecting with your higher self. But it's also a passive kind of energy of analysis, of knowing. There's information here that I do feel like it's going to move you forward with something. And if it's a love relationship here with the lovers, again, this is interesting to me too because... The High Priestess and Eve and the Lovers represent the subconscious. And it's all about connecting with the divine. So, um, you know, it's um, through the mind is connecting with the divine. And in the Lover, she has that serpent over her shoulder. And that basically represents temptation. Now, it can be the temptation to anger, to cut, taking shortcuts, to whatever measures you think your higher self would not tell you to do. There you go. And so, um, but with the high priestess and the lovers too, it's all about creating your reality from the mind. All right. Everything comes from the mind. So the, um, the gown here starts the pool of consciousness, very high vibrational energy. So in terms of a relationship, it is some, you've got something new happening here, especially if you're leaving something, I'm going to tell you, you've got a new opportunity co coming in here but it's all about moving forward. So even if you're single already or you've left a job already, it really is about leaving behind some of the emotional baggage, any connections that don't feel, you know, high vibrational, don't feel positive to you. It's really about letting yourself open your arms wide to new opportunities, gifts, resources coming in. This is just a beautiful energy to have here. So just so we get this, you have Leo, Virgo, Aries, Gemini, Taurus is here, Scorpio is here, all right? So with the strength card, again, if you're afraid of letting go with something, 
you have a better opportunity. You have more power in a situation than you may realize, especially if you are feeling powerless in some circumstance. It's just not the truth. That's what the mind tells us. The mind does the talking. The heart knows the truth. And so with strength, it really is about having a conquering spirit, overcoming any issues. And so there's, um, there's no fear though here because strength is like heading into whatever situation you're dealing with, with compassion and really from the soul level, right? The soul doesn't think, you know, that asshole lied to me or the soul doesn't think, you know, I, I can't stand my boss. It just doesn't work like that. So it really is about overcoming too for some of you, just that day-to-day -day little stuff that might really get under your skin. And so the four of pentacles hangs on to that, but you're letting go. You're releasing resistance. You're releasing resistance and talk about deep spirituality. You have it multiple times here. And you're, you are a divine being in, um, you know, in a material body. That's really all we are. So the hermit shows up and he is the card of the shaman. It's, it, you have your higher self represented here multiple times. And it's really about connecting with that energy. So before you go to bed, because the, um, the lovers, I didn't talk about that because I felt like I was going to get into the cards a little too much, can also represent dream interpretation. And I feel it with this card too. If you're having vivid dreams, that can be your subconscious already knowing. It can also be law of attraction energy. Again, this knowing what you're manifesting. So you can ask before you go to bed, show me in my dreams, what do I need to see? What direction do you want me to take? What direction should I take? And so the hermit um, holds this lantern to guide you through the night. It is a card though of you having deep wisdom, spiritual knowledge, knowledge and information that will in this lifetime will serve you. Um, it's a card too though of a you know, calmness, a centeredness, a, for some of you, if you found that maybe over your lifetime, you've had a fiery temper or you were quick in your words or something like that, it is the evolution of those kinds of behaviors into somebody who maybe thinks a little bit more before they respond, those kinds of things. So that it just creates a wonderful, harmonious energy. This is the, the hermit can't get into a fight. Okay. This is that energy. If you've ever, I work with somebody like that. And one day, um, he was, he, we were in a conversation with a group of people and I looked at him. And I said, this is why nobody could ever fight with you because he's just so open-minded. And so in the distant past, you've got the, um, emperor here. And for some of you, this is a card of if, to some extent force, I'm going to say it. Okay. It is a very powerful energy of getting what you want. And so it may have been a, an energy that you were dealing with that was maybe a contradictory energy if it's not your own. Somebody who was very strong-willed, who was very sure, very sure of themselves, and, you know, and, and it may not have agreed with you. So I do see you taking a break with this person. If it was a relationship, I see you moving on to somebody new. Because I just don't see a match coming back here. I see something better for you. Now, if it's somebody you're still involved with, and it's more about, because with the Four of Swords that we'll talk about next, that can be going to a therapist. It can be working on some things. You may find there's a rebirth in that relationship. But this kind of energy where it's very forceful, very forthright. I mean, there's good, there's wonderful aspects to the emperor. It's very, he's very protective. He has integrity. He's successful. I mean, there's no, there's no, you know, doubting that. It's just that sometimes because he's used to getting his own way, he doesn't like to back down. So um, with the um, Four of Swords here, it, we talked about this taking a break. So if it's a relationship, you may have taken a break from dating altogether or taken a break from a person. Um, or again, like if you're in something, you're saying we haven't broken up. I'm not telling you to break up with the person but you may have made a conscious decision to stay away from certain topics because you know it gets a, a friction going. Um, it doesn't mean that's the wrong person for you. This just shows getting back to center. And it's, again, ask and you'll receive. Ask and it is given. And so with this, knocking the door will open. It's all about asking your guides, your angels, what direction do I need to see? And especially too with the high priestess being here, 
you'll get the insights as quieting your mind, meditating, going within, you have it many times here, and that's how you move forward. So with the Knight of Pentacles, you do have an opportunity here. Now in a job setting, it's a new opportunity. So it may be a new position. It could be um, for some of you, a new job entirely, but with this, it is slow moving. So it may seem like it's been a long time coming, like you've been waiting on this thing forever. It does come through though. It's just an energy that is slow to get going, but it stays. It has great staying power. And I like to see this with your Knight of Wands energy. And I do feel like why, why you're the Knight of Wands is because of this. After a while, you want things to move forward. And so you may have a tendency to prod. And honestly, with the Knight of Pentacles, it is okay to prod them a little bit. So with this, it, it can be somebody that you need to follow up with in a nice way, not in an aggressive way. Um, <clears throat> but I do feel like, especially with that Five of Swords here, we just don't want to uh, create conflict necessarily. So with the Knight of Wands, this is you and your element. It's that get up and go, wanting to move forward, being passionate about your life, being passionate about if it's a new relationship or even, like I said, rekindling something that you're already in. I just don't see a, a, a complete, you know, ended relationship re beginning necessarily. Even though you do have death and that's a rebirth, I feel like it's more about you being reborn than that particular circumstance. Um, but with the um, Knight of Wands here, you definitely move forward and you've got a charismatic um, way about you. So again, if you're following up with the Knight of Pentacles, that charisma can go a long way. You keep things light. I, if you were Knight of Swords, I'd say don't prod. But in the Knight of Wands, sometimes you can get away with a little bit more of that. Knight of Swords, no. <laughs> but um, the Five of Swords, this is the person or situation you're dealing with. So I do feel like you're ending a conflict. I like to see that here. The Four of Swords is instrumental in that. So quieting yourself. If you need to have a conversation with somebody, that Four of Swords is the way to go. Getting yourself calmed down and really quieting your mind, not building a case, not having, you know, um, premeditated resentments or, you know, playing out scenarios. It's a completely quieted mind so that you can divert this because you have another five here too. So there's definitely a change coming. <clears throat> five of Cups, though, I do feel like there's been some sadness involved in this for sure. Um, you, I see it a couple of different times, some disappointment in uh, the way something went down. Like I said, if it's a conflict in the current relationship, I feel like you both have a strong desire to resolve it. If it's something with a job related thing, um, again, there's like in anything really, there's a strong desire to resolve it and not continue to be in that sadness or be out of alignment because there's something about it. It's almost like um, when you have, you know, you see, watch somebody's videotape and there's audio drift. And so their mouth is moving at a different rate than the sound. It's almost like that where it's just not in sync. And so <clears throat> with the death card, here we go. Finally, um, you know, death, the death card's transformative, right? We must die to be reborn. It's a, it's a new beginning. So we don't see it so much as an ending, but the way of walking over this wreckage of the past, because this has already happened. That king's already dead, okay? So there's no bringing him back. It's really about moving forward. And the white horse represents purity, and so does the um, sort of the white roses in the top. Purity, honesty, being true to yourself. And so I do feel like for those of you in a relationship, it is bringing forward a sort of, a, to some extent, a new beginning in something that's already going with the sunrise. Um, it's allowing you to be easier about things. And so, too, and we talked a little bit about job stuff. There is a new beginning there, too. It may be a whole new job, or it may just be speaking up a little bit and getting things moving forward. So with the death card, though, it's, um, you know, an energy of it's kind of a duplicitous thing because it's like let go to receive. It's one of those paradoxical, paradoxical spiritual laws. As you let go, you'll receive and get in flow, right? So we, when we keep hanging on for dear life, and even too with that emperor being here, that can help with that too. So there's not so much of this sort of forceful manifesting stuff going on. It gets a lot easier. So, um, 
Yeah, so let's see here. But again, we, um, you know, I, I say this about the tower too. It's kind of like let go or be dragged. It's like allowing that new phase and chapter. And I know some of you really do get the death card because you'll leave comments about it. And the tower too, where you don't shy away from those energies, um, where you understand that it is, it's part of this journey, your soul's experience here, that letting go of really the humanness of our experience and just letting it uh, come as as more in that deeper spiritual level. But you've got a golden opportunity. So again, it's that letting go. There's something here, something new trying to emerge. And you know how that goes. I mean, it's like it can really slow things down. I think of like when a flower comes up through a, the crack on a sidewalk. It might, it might take a while, right? Because that thing's pushing to get out. Um, but, you know, there is something here trying to come in. The situation will improve. So there's definitely some disappointment in here. So I do like to see that. Ask your angels. We said that already, didn't we? You're ready. So you're ready to move forward. You're ready for something new. And they do give you a yes. So good things are on the way. I mean, we like transformation. That's part of life. We welcome it. So I love you, Sagittarius, and I'll be back again soon.